Uh, my name's Alan Davey, Chief Executive of Arts Council England, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to the third State of the Arts Conference and the Arts Council's Valentine's Day Special. A day when, according to Chaucer, every fowl cometh there to choose his mate, um, and I hope you'll all be making new friends and forging new partnerships during the course of today and help us fulfill the Arts Council's newly defined role as Cupid amongst artists. Uh, we began last night in Manchester, the kissing cousin of Salford, where we are today in this first State of the Arts Conference being held outside London. I'm really glad that we're here in Salford, close to Media City, as we present the conference alongside our partners and new Valentine lovers, the BBC. Uh, the past year has seen the Arts Council and the BBC really forge close links, collaborating in running the Building Digital Capacity for the Arts seminars and in developing uh, our new initiative, The Space. Now, you'll be hearing a lot more about The Space um, during the course of the day, I'm sure. But it's the first major demonstration of the Arts Council and the BBC's public value partnership a kind of um, val extended Valentine card, if you like. Um, the two organizations are teaming up to launch a prototype digital service, a type of arts player plus that will have a presence on TV, computer, tablets, and smartphones. And between 50 to 70 organizations or artists will be creating new programs and material for the space. And all these original commissions uh, will be announced next Wednesday, the 22nd of February. And the service itself will launch in May as part of an exceptional summer of arts. And I think that's something we're also going to be talking about um, during the day. The second new thing this year is the fact that the conference is being held in an arts venue for the first time. It's wonderful to be here in the Lowry, one of the first lottery-funded cultural buildings that have been so important in regenerating towns and cities, but also bringing artists um, and the arts closer to people all around the country. And third and finally, as anyone who arrived here last night will attest, we've all had the chance to experience some, some thought-provoking art as part of the pre-conference program. And I'd like to thank Manchester International Festival for giving us such a good, uh, a good beginning last night and thought-provoking work that should really set the tone for the day. Because today is very much about artists and the contribution they can make to society. We determined that State of the Arts this year should have more input from those practicing the arts. And I'm therefore particularly pleased to welcome the 50 individual artists who attended the conference through our bursary scheme. I'm sure that all your contributions and perspectives will be invaluable to the discussions we're having today. And now, I'd like to introduce um, my latest Valentine, uh, Peter Salmon, director of BBC North. Thank you. I feel we should embrace <laughs> <laughs> I feel we ought to embrace, actually. That would be a little, after that, be a little French, wouldn't it? This is the north of England. Welcome back, Kirsty, Alan. Um, thank you to the Arts Council and Manchester International Festival for an incredible night last night and the Larry Theatre. Less than 20 words in, and I've already name checked three terrific partners uh, who all work on national, regional, uh, and local levels uh, right across the UK, as well as, as well as being fantastic ambassadors. Uh, for UK creativity. I'm, I'm proud that's the way the modern BBC uh, is operating with such uh, partners. And I'm particularly um, keen to find out from Alan and co about some of the commissions, the new commissions uh, for the digital space full of technological and editorial innovation. I think the first announcements of those commissions uh, next week, which is terrific. So, welcome to sunny Salford Keys. I was looking up at this stage last week, looking at the Dubliners playing at the Radio 2 Folk Awards, feeling quite young, given they're all at least 82. The latest member of the band had joined 48 years ago. I thought that was solidarity. Um, they finished drinking in the, in the hotel across the way at six in the morning the next, the next morning, living up to their reputations. Anyway, listen, close by is our new home. Uh, BBC North, you've not, probably not had a chance to, to go there. You, you might have read about us. You might have read about the tram training our traumatised staff had to complete to get here. You must have struggled here yourselves on those trams. They're, they're darn complicated, aren't they? You might have read about the chair champions we needed to help us settle into our open plan offices. You might have read that the lack of specialist cheese shops in Manchester forced some BBC staff to remain down south. Complete utter, utter rubbish, codswallop, of course. We, we have uh, over 2,000 workers here, and in the main, they, they love it. The energy, the openness, 
uh, and the spirit of, um, of creative life that, that really does thrive in this region. I hope you get a taste of that today. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about ourselves, our initial move isn't quite complete. Already this is home to a, a wide range of strong BBC output, 2,000 of us, uh, from the BBC Philharmonic Orchestra to Match of the Day, Blue Peter to Dragon's Den, Mastermind to File on Four, as well as the CBBC and CBBS channels, which are currently enjoying their 10th anniversary just this week. The whole of the Radio 5 Live uh, area, station, re religion and ethics, the learning and the sport departments working on 2012 this year, national and local journalists, as well as 400 technologists who design and operate everything from iPlayer technology, the red button services that Kirsty referred to earlier, research and development, R&D, and the BBC homepage. Soon we're going to welcome BBC One's breakfast to the fold, and over the next few years, BBC Three, ready for you and yours, and up to another thousand BBC staff. So lots of terrific people and output for you to play with. Later this year on the site, we're going to be joined by ITV and that bastion of high culture. No, not the Jeremy Kyle show, but the, the marvellous Coronation Street. They're building a whole new set and a street. You want to have a look at it right across the canal over there, Chuck. Just a few hundred yards away. I'm particularly thrilled that today is very much a national event, not something parochial, though how artists um, can work together at a grassroots level is very much part of the agenda today, I know, particularly given current economic and social challenges. Of course, for all of us, it's about supporting and finding talent, discovering the poetry and romance in the everyday, as well as excitement and the provocation right under our noses. Um, I'm going to leave you with the words of that local sage, uh, visionary, and now actually a close neighbour of ours, the Man United manager, Sir Alex Ferguson. When he first saw a star player, he said, I remember the first time I saw him. He was 13, and he floated over the ground like a cocker spaniel, chasing a piece of silver paper in the wind. Now, if that's not poetry... May you all experience a Cocker Spaniel moment in the course of the next few hours. Thanks and enjoy. Thank you.